The greatest battle in the history of the universe is about to begin. The Rulant! They're about to attack! Quickly, we'll have to trap them in the canyon! The Dimetrodons are harmless. Leave them be. The clever Dino Riders seal off the escape route. It's up to you, Commandos. Now! Leaping into the path of the thundering giants, the Commandos close... If you think about what a dragon is, it's basically a dinosaur. And some of the legends of dragons might be distorted versions of dinosaurs, really. Here are the different occurrences of the Hebrew word tanin in the Bible. And in most places, it's translated dragon. There are a few places where it's not translated dragon, but even there, maybe it should be as well. And I think this, this word tanin refers to any sort of, uh, anything like a dinosaur, anything similar like a plesiosaur, for example, that would also be classified under this word. Maybe some things like snakes as well. I gotta stop it right there. Uh, there's a, a favorite quote of mine from one of my uh, all-time childhood heroes, Carl Sagan. And uh, the saying or the quote is this, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidences. I believe that there's a great deal of truth in the theory that many of the dragons of myth and lore and fantasy have been inspired by the discovery of dinosaur bones in a past when people did not know dinosaurs. However, you take that uh, one step further. In my personal opinion, the doctor made a big mistake by giving all these references. He might have been betting on us not looking up the references that he made. However, I did. Uh, the Bible that I'm using as a reference is the uh, NIV uh, study Bible. The uh, NIV is the New International Version. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 33. Their wine is the venom of serpents, the deadly poison of cobras. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 13 By night I went out through the valley gate toward the jackal. Job chapter 30 verse 29 I have become a brother of jackals, a companion of owls. <laughs> Alright, stop, 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 stop. I gotta stop it right there. Uh, the amount of bullshit piling up is ridiculous. I'm, I'm covered in bullshit. Uh, the room is full of bullshit. It smells like bullshit in here. I'm going to spare you the agony of, of all these uh, references, okay? Uh, Psalm 44, verse 19. Isaiah 34, verse 13. Isaiah 35, verse 7, 43, 20. Jeremiah 9, 11. Uh, Jeremiah 10, 22, 49, 33, 51, 34. Micah 1, 8. And Lamentations 4, 3 all make references to jackals. <clears throat> and sometimes not specifically, sometimes in a meta metaphorical context. So it's not even literally talking about an actual jackal. And sometimes it's jackal in combination with other animals like jackals and hyenas, or a jackal and an owl. Um, it's sometimes it's used as a reference to the, the home of a, ja of a jackal being used as reference to a desolate place, or a place that is barren. Um, so, yeah. And then with these other references, there are so many liberties made or the descriptions are so vague that it cannot definitively be said to be a dragon or a dinosaur or anything uh, for that matter. I mean, okay, uh, Psalm 74, verse 13. Sea monster, uh, reference to God breaking its head. Okay, the sea monster, what does it look like? What, what does it have? Does it have flippers? Does it have a tail? What? Psalm 91, 13, uh, there's a reference to a lion and a cobra, something about someone treading upon them. Neither of those are dragons. Uh, Psalm 148, 7, sea creatures, very vague, once again. Isaiah 13, 22, hyenas and jackals. Uh, Isaiah 27, 1, Leviathan, um, which is uh, not very well described uh, creature or by any standard. I mean, at one point it's referenced to a sea monster, but then it's also called the coiling serpent and the gliding serpent. Um, very vague. Isaiah 51, uh, verse 9, it says monster. That's, that's all it makes any attempt to describe it, it's just monster which is very open um, Jeremiah 14 6 wild donkeys that's not a dragon uh, Jeremiah 51 37 King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylonia he's, he's described uh, using a uh, serpent as a metaphor but they're talking about a freaking person uh, as a Kyle 29 verse 3 great monster once again very vague used as a symbolic uh, reference to the Pharaoh of Egypt another person uh, Genesis 121, all sea creatures. 
uh, Exodus 7, 9, this is the one that really made me laugh. Because they're talking about the staff that Moses threw to the ground and turned into a snake. They're using that as a reference for a dragon. Are you serious? Uh, Job 7, 12. The sea. Not even the creatures in the sea, but the actual sea. So, uh, I'm thinking that uh, n not only did someone prepare this list for Dr. Lyle, uh, but he apparently didn't even bother to check it, because these are, are very sad um, excuses for evidence. This is not conclusive by any means. This is not very descriptive at all. It's a very pathetic and poor attempt uh, to twist the literature into your own aims. So, yeah. <laughs>